today on Living Streams. A man who can manage moments of offense is a truly mature person. And now to the word. Our theme scripture is Mark 12, 30 and 31. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, your mind and your strength. And the second is like unto it, you will love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said there is no other commandment greater than these two. And these two represents the entire scripture, the whole Bible, the whole Bible. When God called Israel out of Egypt, he needed to give them a, a constitution. What we call the Ten Commandments was actually the constitution that God gave to Israel, which is like the Bible. The Bible is actually our constitution and uh, he gave them something to live by. He told them, you won't live the way you lived in Egypt. These are my commandments. These are the constitution of the nation of Israel. Israel became a nation when they left the land of Egypt and God needed to give them a written document, written with his own hands. These are the ways to live with me. The first was, you shall have no other God before me. The second was, um, 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 you shall not create any graven image wherever you find it. Even if you happen to have come to heaven, when you go down, don't make any image of anything. Number three is, you remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Number four was, do not take the name of the Lord in vain. You will not hold you guiltless. Those first four was towards God. But the remaining six was for man. Honor your father and mother. Don't covet your neighbor's things. Don't covet his wife. Don't steal. Don't kill. Don't commit adultery. All those things were commands towards men. And God summarized all of them as love. Because when Jesus came, he reduced the thing from ten commandments to two. He said, if you love the Lord your God with all your heart, strength and mind, then you love your neighbor as yourself. So from 10, one page, 10 commandments to two verses. Two verses. He reduced it. In fact, somewhere along the line, he says, he says uh, uh, a new commandment I give to you, that you love your neighbor as yourself. That's the summary, everything. And then Paul came and reduced it further. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 14, he said, you should follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. In case two verses is, two, is a problem for you. Is compressed into one. To love God and follow peace with men. That's the entire Bible. The entire Bible in one verse. Then me, Ezekiel, I came up with a new one. Smaller than Paul's own. Love God and love man. Sefinito. Love God, love man. Everything you do that is against God is a show that you don't love him. He said, if you love me, obey my word. So anytime you break the word of God, you have just shown you don't love God. And the same thing with men. You love man as you love yourself. Whatever you do to a man that you can't do to yourself, it's a, it's a sign, a show that you don't love man. And you're breaking the word of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. So I want to talk about, today is a family and friends service. I want to talk about relationship management. If you are not here, you are married, at least you have a friend. I didn't say boyfriend or girlfriend. I mean friend. I said friend that is a boy. And friend that is a girl. Boyfriend is romantic. Friend that is a boy is just friend. Platonic. Friend that is a girl is just friend. Praise the name of the Lord. Why are you looking at me like that? And if you don't have a family, you have friends. You have neighbors. You say love your neighbor. Neighbor as yourself. So let's look at relationship management. One of the hardest things to manage in life is relationships. Some people say it's car. BMW. No. Man, man management is harder than car management. And they say it costs twice as much to manage a thing than it costs to acquire it. So having friends is not a problem. Managing friends, remaining friends after so many years is the problem. So let me give you some skill. I have 11 of them. Wherever we stop, God help us. All right? But one, it takes twice as much wisdom and energy to manage a human relationship than it costs to acquire it. Twice as much wisdom and energy. So soon as you get a new friendship, please prepare to maintain it with all the best of your abilities. People I say, I say please meet my, meet my new friend. We say, oh my God, this guy is great. He's great. My brother, prepare for the first offense. Because it's usually very bloody. The, the deeper the love, the tougher the offense. Your offense can be very painful. Whenever you get a new friend, prepare for the offense so that it doesn't take you by surprise. Hello? 
Prepare for the offense because you shall be offended. Tell anybody your friend will offend you. Say your friend must offend you. Otherwise, not your friend. Add it. Not your friend. Must offend you. He says, if I offend me, you betray me. I just said you, my brother. Wake up to reality. Jesus said, it is impossible for offense not to come. Luke 17, 1. He must offend you. Get ready. So you don't say, kill yourself. You relax, take life and keep going on. Even comfort your friend who offended you. So don't worry. Such is life. <laughs> Number two. No matter how much you love the person in question, just know that they have buckets and loads of offenses to give to you too. It is wisdom to expect it so it doesn't take you by surprise. It is wisdom to expect it so it doesn't take you by surprise. So no matter how much you quarrel and correct them, prepare the same offense is likely to reoccur. The same offense is likely to reoccur. So, or you can get a totally different offense from the one that came the first time. Just be prepared. Receive grace to continue in Jesus' name. Three, most people will not intentionally offend you. My counsel is regard 80 to 90% of offenses as unintentional. Most people will not intentionally offend. So don't make it look as if they really wanted to offend you. You are just making the matter worse. They call it overreaction. So try not to conclude that they intentionally did it. If you never speak with them about it, you will never know the real position of things. Some people say, I will not talk about it. <laughs> you knew what he was doing. No, ask. This is what you did. What happened? They will give you a, an explanation that may calm down your nerves. Number four, learn to give people the benefit of doubt. Learn to give people the benefit of doubt. No matter the rage or the anger you may feel at the moment, give people the benefit of doubt. It will help you not to misjudge people. It will help you not to misjudge people because you too may find yourself in their position and you would love to be given a benefit of doubt. Is that okay? Number five, be slow to speak when you are angry. In fact, while the anger is boiling, keep your mouth shut. Try not to speak when you are angry because you will not be able to coordinate your words. There will be a disconnect between your brain, your emotions, and your words. So you may not have control over your utterances and you may say things for which you will have to later apologize. And if you are bad at apologizing, you may have ruined that relationship forever. And if you ruin the relationship and it was planned that God, that person should be your destiny partner, you have short change your destiny one way or the other. So relationships are very crucial. So in, in, in essence, the entire Bible is about relationship. So you've got to know how to manage it. You may destroy an innocent person that is genuine when you talk too quickly. You misjudge. Number six. I don't know if you know that. I don't know whether it's a, it's a story or it's real. Neighbors in a particular compound. A guy was using... Okay, the guy came back. Another neighbor came back from traveling and said, I'm sorry. I've been, I've been using your wife. He used your wife so much that I began to feel bad. So I said, I should tell you I've been using your wife. He went and killed his wife. Only to find out later that the man meant Wi-Fi. You know how our phone can type mean what you type for you. So he has killed his wife over Wi-Fi. It's number six now. Beware of people who are fond of reporting other people to you. Beware of people who are fond of reporting other people to you. They will soon report you to others. They will soon report. They are not trying to love you. They are just manifesting their real character. They are journalists without certificate. So beware of them. They are called by the Bible whisperers. They separate best friends. What do they do? They separate best friends. Number seven. 
when you are hurt and really offended, do your best not to speak about it with anyone who will likely escalate it in your mind. When you are hurt and really offended, do your best not to talk about it with anybody who is likely to escalate it in your mind. You know, you know all those close to you know their character. That if you tell them, they say, what? And what did you do? I did nothing. You did nothing? I've told you you are not my friend. You are not a real person. You did nothing. Please, please, get, get, get away from here. So what should I do? Give him back. Go back. If I send him a chat. You know your friends who have those erratic behaviors. When you are hurt, go as far as the east from the west from them. If not, that matter is going to get worse. Who is getting what I'm talking about today? If you must talk, talk with people who will comfort you, who will counsel you, people who have sound judgment, they are rational, and they are not giving to sentiments. When offended, try not to be more offended than you already are. Still under that number seven. To be more offended is to talk to somebody who has put fuel in your small fire. Keep the matter away from your volatile friends. Keep it away from who? Your volatile friend. Number eight. When you have been hurt by anyone, please try not to drag your family members into it. Just go meet your husband. You won't believe what sister equated to me just today. Let me come out from the kitchen, I will tell you. Let me prepare your food. You now prepare the food, and the man is trying to enjoy the food. He said, You won't believe. She said, All of us are stupid, me and you. Haba. <laughs> Do you want that man to eat that food or not? Because he will lose appetite now. So men who say, and you tell you, and you come to tell me, you really don't want me to eat. I've been told you you've been against my life. Eat your food. <laughs> Hallelujah. Husband, you have a problem. Don't drag your wife into it, especially if you're a husband. Protect your wife. Protect the emotional balance of your wife. Bear it alone. Did you hear what I said? Because there's what you will tell your wife, your wife will not respect that person anymore. And that will be your fault. Is somebody got what I'm saying? Manage it. Some people, they feel like in the name of communication, you must say everything. Some communication is gossip. It's slander. There's what you must not say in order to protect your spouse. I can't be telling my wife everything I hear in church. All the trouble I have, I go and sit down as if I don't have work. And some people think because they've told me something so my wife automatically knows. We are, we are husband and wife. We are not partners in gossip. Are you understand what I'm saying? We're not, we don't sit down and say, hey, Brother Anthony, he sleep with people. He sleep with everybody in church. Sister Iqua has impregnated all the men. And sister... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm not doing my wife any good. I'm destroying my life, destroying her life. I'm sabotaging my happiness. Is somebody got what I'm saying now? So there are things I go home and just keep to myself. If he pain me too much, I say, Jesus, take it away. Oh, Lord. Don't let your emotional bad feeling override your sense of judgment. Did you hear what I said? Somebody, that's how to keep the peace. Keep everywhere clean. It may linger in their hearts longer than your own. You may move on and they are still there in the matter you told them. They will take over the battle. You tell them, but why now me have moved on? You say, no, me, I'm the defender of the universe. I'm Voltron. I will never remember Voltron. Voltron, the defender of the universe. He's not defending the universe anymore. He has handed over to Spider-Man. Praise God. <laughs> Number nine, when in a hurtful situation, please speak first to God about it. When you are in a hurtful situation, somebody has done something to you, please first speak to God about it. Pastor, I why should I be telling God that when I should be talking to the person that offended me? Pastor, I should go straight to the person. No, my brother, sister, talk to God first. 
Speak to God about it. Why? Seek his wisdom about the matter. In that matter you are going through, there is a wisdom of God. In the book of James 1.5, he said, If you lack wisdom, ask of God. So this brother has just said some terrible things about me. I feel so much, all I feel is pain. You don't feel wisdom. When you are not feeling wisdom, what should you do? Go and ask for it. Because they, see, let me tell you. What happens next will not be de not determined by what the person did to you. It will be determined by your action, your reaction. Your reaction can become the worst thing than the offense itself. So be careful. Hallelujah. In this town, a man beat his wife one Sunday morning. And neighbor called his, called the brother of the wife. And the brother of the wife landed in a hurry with anger. And stabbed the husband of his sister. In his mind, he's teaching him a lesson. He died on the spot. He didn't die tomorrow. He died that day. He didn't know that what the stab he gave to the guy at the back came out here. They told him, your brother-in-law is dead. He said, lie, he's not dead. I just taught him a lesson. Guy was in, his, in the pool of his own blood. They couldn't bury that corpse for maybe four years or something. One case to the other, one case to the other. <sighs> Praise the name of the Lord. Be quick to hear. But what? Slow to speak. Slow to wrath. A man who can manage moments of offense is a truly mature person. Man or woman. Truly mature. The growth of your body is not a sign of maturity. It's a, it's a sign of good food. Because you don't eat good food now. You'll be surprised at how you will shrink. You, 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 nobody will desire you. Praise the Lord. Jesus did not just grow in stature. He grew in wisdom and in what? Favor with God and man. Number 10. Prayer will serve as your way of venting your ill feelings and frustrations. Because whether you like it or not, after somebody has offended you, even though I say don't talk to people like that, you must talk to, you must talk. Because if you don't talk, you just, you just, your job is, your job is standing at the bus stop. Standing at the bus stop. Because they say you shouldn't talk. You just implode. You may manifest self. Just roll on the ground. They say, what happened? They say, they say I should not talk. So what do you do? Just talk to God. Somebody say, talk to God. You Talking to God is your way of venting. Somebody say, vent. Uh -huh. If you don't let out the smoke, the smoke will damage you. So let it out. Hmm? What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God. How many things? Oh, what we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pains we bear. All because we do not carry everything, not some things, to God in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise, forsake you? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield you. Thou will find a solace there. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. All right. So you can properly, you can act properly um, concerning the matter when you have talked to God about it, requesting for wisdom. Let me tell you one thing that happened to me. 
something that happened to me. I did business. You know, I used to do business and preaching side by side. I did business with one woman. She was to pay me like uh, hundred and something thousand. Those days, oh. So, when I went to collect my money, she began to quarrel with me. Just, she got 50,000 and just threw at me. And walk away. Yeah. What I did was that I served as middleman to sell house to our. This house we are talking about, not a small house, so two duplex building, twin flat, duplex, on a third road. I used my relationship with the family to, got, to, to get her the house for 3.5 million. Even then, it's ridiculous. My percentage was that kind of 350,000. I told her to give me half, 5%. She threw it at me. I vexed. I vexed. Is that a good English? I vexed it. I was angry. I was so angry. So I took the 50,000 and nearly threw it back at her. But Jesus, Jesus. That time there was no church mind. All you have was Jesus. So I went, I took a bike. I went straight to church. I said, I'm going to church. I will kneel down and cuss this woman. That's what I want to do. I was so angry. I was going to worry to preach. You blocked me. Made, delayed my trip. I arrived in the night because of you. Because of this. Are you, oh, I vexed. As I landed the church, so I can kneel down and cuss her very well. I saw one brother who had been believing God for him to marry since he was pasting his wedding card. He was gumming it together. He took the job. He, he, he is a printer. So he decided to print his own wedding card. I said, Brother Linus, this is a wedding card. I said, wow. I forgot my mission. I stood there with him in the joy and amazement of this miracle of this brother. Finally, getting married. I forgot I was supposed to curse somebody. <laughs> Guess what? I think God intervened for her. Because he would have walked, went at that level of anger and I was treated unjustly. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. At least for those unkind words that she said. It, it wasn't necessary. She's happy now. Not knowing what she has missed. Praise God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But you see, I was going to pray, but not to ask for wisdom. I wanted to kneel down in the house of God. So, oh Lord, I make my case. Therefore, Father, make her poor. You know, no, me. It's God that just helped me. Praise the Lord. It would have been very terrible. I forgot. And God just calmed my mind. I said, yeah, yeah, that's my son. Calm down, calm down. Calm down. Only to find out that her daughter herself is, used to be one of my members. So I would have made her poor too without knowing. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> Finally, number 11. Know that you too have been an offender one time or the other. So do to others what you want them to do. Would you love to be forgiven? Forgive them too. You love to be given another chance? Give them another chance as well. It's called the royal or golden rule. Do unto others as you will love them to do. On, that should be Matthew 7 verse 12. All right? When you do that, your life now and in the future will be smooth. Say, so therefore all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do you even so to them? For this is the law and the prophets. So what's the way out? What if you were to ask God for something about this whole matter? What should you ask? What should you ask? Lord, give me patience. What should God give you? Help me to be patient with people. Help me to be what? Patient. Let me tell you something. 
Anyone you seem to have too much of issues with today, watch well. That person is relevant in your future. Rewind. Anybody you seem to have too much issues with, you are so irritated by the person, and the person is, ah. watch well, look well. That person is relevant in your future. Maybe, you know, there are many levels of destiny helpers. High grade, middle grade, low grade. Sometimes can be a high grade destiny helper. Be careful. Most people who will be destiny helpers to you, you must have gone through their rough edges and managed their challenges. And then the thing turns back. How many of you remember David and his 600 men? Tell me the quality of those men. Number one, distress. Number two, indebted. Number three, discontented. Demonic trinities of D. Distress, debt, and discontented. How many of you remember one time they stole their camp plus their wives and children? David cried, they cried. Then they finished crying and took stones. They will stone you now. As if it was David that came to them. They are the ones that came to David though. Who stole you now? Why do you let them steal our wife? <laughs> Who stole you now? <laughs> Idiot. What did David do? The Bible says he encouraged himself in the Lord. David would have said, you stole me. Who need who here? I need you or you need me. Who come to who? All of you, get out. I've been feeding you ingrates. What else do you call them? Um, uh, Traitors, Dion. If I see you here, I call fire on you. But David ignored them and did what? Encouraged himself in the Lord, inquired from the Lord, took some of them. Some of them were too weak to fight. He took the rest of them, fought, overtook, won, and came back. David became king. Who became members of the National Guard? These men, National Guard means that. The, we have it in this country. The president's personal army. That's a battalion or whatever dedicated to the president. So David's, those distressed men became the mighty men of David. Not mighty men of Israel. I have news for you. Some of your worst offenders have some mighty role to play in your life. May God give us grace to be patient. Welcome back. Welcome back. I know for sure without a doubt that something new has happened to you. The word of God coming into your spirit has caused a transformation. The Bible says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God for your life. I want to invite you to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You're a backslider. This is a good time to get restored. Very simple. Pray this simple prayer with me and you will be saved. Close your eyes. Put your hand on your chest and pray this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Forgive me. Come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. I commit my entire existence to you. Write my name in the book of life. I vow to serve you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, whether you feel it or not, a miracle of salvation has taken place. Locate the nearest living Bible teaching church. And if you are in New York, I welcome you to God's House of Refuge, number 80, Kodebido Street. If you are in Eket, locate any God's House of Refuge, anywhere Eket, Kalaba, Ikotekwene, and so on. But if you don't have God's House of Refuge anywhere there, locate a solid Bible believing church and tell them I sent you. Settle down there, get pastored, and grow from glory to glory in Jesus' name. Till I come your way again, same station, same time next week. God bless you. And have a great time.